what happens when we move back and forth along a single line, which means you can go that way, you can also go the other way. So in order to represent that, we're going to draw our very important famous number line that we've been using a lot through here. Why am I doing that? Because you need to have a reference point whenever you start talking about motion. You always have to have a reference point. When I tell you I move 13 meters away, the first thing you're going to ask is, from where? Well, I might say, well, I move 13 meters from my house. Or I might say, I move 14 meters um, from my front doorstep. But if I just come to you and say, oh, I move 7 meters, well, that's worthless if you don't know where did I start from. I mean, you can't reconstruct my motion unless you know where the starting point is. So the starting point here in all of these uh, situations in physics is the origin, it's the reference point. We call it x is equal to zero. So this is what we call the reference point, also called the origin. And of course, this is a graph of x, which we're going to say is in meters. So the parentheses just mean we're, uh, mean we're measuring x, but in meters. Okay. So what do we have on this number line? We have uh, x is equal to 1, we have x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, 4, 5, and so on. And they go dot, 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 you know, out forever. So let me go and take that away and I'll put a 6 right here. But they go basically on to positive infinity in this direction, as you all know. And then they go to negative infinity in the other direction. So I'll just take a second and we will mark down some tick marks here. So we have tick, 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 and it goes to negative infinity that way. We'll just write it down as negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, that's enough for right now. Okay, so the question is, we're going to start out with something really, really basic, right? So let's say that you're moving between point number 1 and point number 2. Or in physics, what we say is you're moving from some initial point, that's the first point, to a final point, that's the destination point. Initial, final, that's what we talk about in physics. So let's say that our initial point is x is equal to 1 right there, so we're going to label it x, I for initial. That's just where we started from. We didn't start at the origin. We started one unit away from the origin. So if this were my front doorstep, then maybe I actually started moving about one meter away from my doorstep. That's where I started walking from. And then my final destination, let's say in this example, is uh, x is equal to 5 away from the origin. So I'm going to label this guy x sub f. So you need to kind of get used to the idea in physics of seeing variables like x with little letters or numbers underneath it. You're just going to have to get over the idea. I know it looks a little scary at first because you're not used to seeing little, little letters underneath the variables, but they're going to be something you're going to have to deal with. All those things mean is they're just telling you something. So in this case, the I means that's my initial position. This is my final position there. So if I want to calculate the distance uh, between here, let me go ahead and write it down. This is the initial position. And this is the final position. All right. What if I want to calculate the distance traveled? So the distance traveled between initial and final. How would you find that? Well, you all know that you, you ended up at 5 and you started from 1, so you probably could all figure out that it's 5 minus 1. Now I'm going to put some absolute value signs around this and you'll understand why when I get just a little bit deeper in the examples. The distance travels, the absolute value of 5 minus 1, it's the same thing as counting. 1, 2, 3, 4 units, and 5 minus 1, of course, you know is 4. Absolute value of 4 is just 4. So basically, we say the distance traveled in this example is trivial. It's trivially easy to see that it's 4 meters. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? That's what we do. We always do subtraction to find distance traveled. So let's calculate a similar quantity called displacement. In fact, you're going to see that it equals the same thing. But here's where we start to introduce things that scare a lot of students, but there's no reason to be scared. Displacement is something that we write down as triangle x. Now, the way you write, read this in terms of sentence, you don't say triangle x. The uh, triangle is the Greek letter delta, the Greek uh, capital letter delta. So you read it as delta x. So if I come up to you and I say, hey, I have a delta x of 2. Delta means change. It literally means change. And in terms of math and science and physics, that's what it means. So this quantity means change in, in what? Change in x, because that's what follows it. Change in x. Okay? Change in x. How do we find change in x? Well, in, in terms of this thing that we're doing right here, it's the final value, 5 minus the initial value of 1. It's pretty much what we did up here, but you'll see the difference in a second. 
So five minus one. Notice we did not put any absolute value signs there. And in fact, we're gonna save our, 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 our calculation here in just a second. We're gonna write it as in general, we're gonna say it's the final value of your distance from the origin minus your initial value there. So you need to get used to the idea of when you see delta something, delta anything, could be delta velocity, delta x, delta energy, delta temperature, delta magnetic field, delta electric field, whatever. Whatever it is means change in that quantity. And the way you find change is you always take the final value minus the initial value. Think about if you're taking temperature of water on the stove. Your initial value of the water when you start might be 75 degrees. I'm using Fahrenheit. I know that's not great. It could be 20 degrees Celsius, whatever. Your initial value is some value of temperature. You turn the heat on, you walk away, you come back and it's boiling, okay? Boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius. That's your final value of temperature. And if I ask you, what's the delta T? Then you know, because I'm teaching you, that delta T, delta temperature, means change in temperature. And to find change in any quantity, take the final value, which is 100, minus the initial value, whatever it was, 20. And then you calculate that difference, and that would be delta T. Now, we're just talking about it in terms of displacement, so it's a distance. Delta X, final value, minus initial value. That's what it is. So I'm going to circle this there. So in this particular problem, what is the displacement? In this particular problem, delta x, what is it? Final value is 5 minus initial value of 1. So delta x is equal to 4 meters. Okay, This is the displacement. Now you might say, well, why do I care about calculating this thing called displacement? It's the same thing as the distance, isn't it? Well, in this case, yes, the first example I gave you, they're the same thing. Distance is equal to displacement. But here's the deal. Displacement is a positive number if the final value is bigger. So when you do the subtraction, you get a positive value for displacement. In this case, like we have four, positive value of displacement means you move to the right, okay? But I can actually have a negative value of displacement if I were to have started here and moved to the left. Because if I have a delta x, and it's always final minus initial, if the final value is less, meaning this way, less than the initial value, you'll get a negative number. Okay, so the way to think about this is, if you see a displacement of delta x that's positive, it means I move to the right, like this example. If I see a delta x that's negative, it means that I've moved to the left because I've actually moved backwards the other way. So in physics, that is a crucial for you to understand. When you deal with displacement or velocity or, or even delta t, like I was talking about temperature, or delta time, when you change time, anything like that, if you get a positive value of delta whatever it is, it means the value has increased. In this case, we're increasing distance. But if you get a negative value of delta whatever, it means that you've decreased the value. So the sign is very important. For instance, later on, I'm going to talk about velocity. Positive velocity is going to be positive 5 meters per second. A negative velocity just means, like if I have negative 2 meters per second, that just means it's 2 meters per second, but going the other way. So the sign tells you which way it's going, relative to what? Relative to the origin. Positive values move this way, negative values move this way. In this case, they were the same because I calculated 4 meters for the displacement, and I take the absolute value of that and I get distance. So you might say, what's really the distance between, or the difference between distance and displacement? Displacement can be positive or negative, depending on if you're going right or if you're going left. Distance is, I just, I don't even care if I'm moving right or left, I just wanna know how far I moved. Whether I take three steps this way, or if I take three steps this way, the distance is the same. I just care about how far I moved. That's what we typically think of when we talk about distance. I don't care if I'm going that way or that way. So we throw away the sign to find the distance. But the displacement, by definition, can be positive moving right, negative moving left, and we have to keep the sign because it's, it's useful information. Which way did I move? So let's uh, solidify this stuff by just doing another quick example. This uh, will drill it home for you here. So let's do another example real quick. Let's draw another quick little number line like this, and we have the origin here. I'm gonna do things a little bit faster. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I'm going to label these negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Of course, they're 0. So then let me label my initial points and my final points. Let's say you're given a problem where you're told that the initial value of the position is right there at x. I'm sorry, this is the final value of the position. And over here is the initial value of the position. 
okay? In other words, you might think of this as I start out, this is my front door, I start out four meters away from my front door, and then I start walking and I end up two meters away from the front door. So I'm kind of walking towards the front door, backwards for lack of a better word. So calculate the displacement, right? So the displacement is written as delta x, which means the change in the x variable, which is always, always, always written as the final value minus the initial value. This is what you need to remember. It's final minus initial. And then you just read it right off the chart. Delta x is equal to the final value, which is a positive 2, minus an initial value, which is a positive 4. So now you realize why I spent so much time reviewing things like adding, subtracting integers, right? Because now we're taking 2 minus 4. So you're taking a positive and subtracting a number larger. And you should know from your rules of, of algebra that delta x is going to be negative 2 units of what? Units of meters. So then you look at this and you say, what does this mean? Well, it means the change in x was 2 meters, but the negative sign tells me I moved to the left. If it were positive 2 meters, then it would have meant I moved to the right. But the equation is done the exact same way, final value of x minus initial value. Now let's compare and contrast this to the distance traveled. The distance traveled is just the absolute value of the displacement. So I just literally take the sign and throw it away. So it's 2 meters. This is the final answer. By the way, I'm going to circle all my answers with a little bracket. That's a habit that I picked up in school. So anytime you see this, it, it's not a strange symbol. It just means I'm circling. Instead of a big circle, I'm just showing you what the answer is. So in a nutshell, displacement is how far I moved. It also carries direction in information, either positive for right uh, hand movement and negative for left hand movement. Distance, you don't care about uh, direction at all. All I want to know is how far did I go whether I went that way or that way. So I take the sign and I throw it away. I only move two meters. So let me make sure I have everything in my notes here. Distance is always positive. Displacement can be positive or negative, depending if you're moving right or left. Um, displacement carries more info than distance, obviously, because you have a sign in there. So the numbers are the same, but displacement has more information. And because it carries direction info, in other words, to the right is positive, to the left is negative, because it carries direction info, we're going to learn in a couple of sections that displacement is actually what we call a vector quantity. A vector, just to destroy any mystery, there's no mystery. A vector quantity is just a number or a, or a value that you have that has a, 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 a magnitude, which means how big is the number. In this case, it was 2 but it also has some direction information also. Anything with magnitude and direction is called a vector quantity. So displacement is a vector quantity, and we're going to talk a lot more about it. It's not a mystery, it's just because displacement is always a number associated and also a sign telling you which way the displacement is going, so it's vector. This guy, distance, is not a vector quantity. It's not a vector quantity because it does tell you how far you move, but it has no information about which direction you move, so it's not a vector quantity. All right, so let's do just a couple more quick examples to solidify things. They're just going to take a second, and then we'll basically be done with this topic. Problem number three, let's say we have a nice number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. And let's say you're given as your problem statement, you're given that the initial position of your x is negative 2, and your final value of position is 3. And you're told, find the displacement, find the speed. Okay. Well, you can plot them on here if you want. You don't have to, though. In fact, let's do it without plotting it. We'll, we'll do it at the end. Let's go ahead and write down. Delta x is the displacement. Okay. It's always equal to the final value minus the initial value. And we gave you those values right here. So the displacement, a vector quantity, because it has magnitude and direction, final value, minus, but notice you're subtracting a negative number, so you need to write it like this. You're subtracting it always, that's what the formula says, but here in, in place of xi, you're actually putting a negative number in place. Which means what it really is is 3 plus 2, because double negatives make it a positive. So what is 3 plus 2? Delta x is equal to 5 uh, meters. Now what does this tell you? It means you moved 5 meters, but it tells you more than that. Because it's a positive answer, it means you move 5 meters to the right. You have di direction information also with the um, magnitude. So if you wanted to uh, plot that, or at least verify that it's right, go up here. The initial value was at negative 2, xi. Final value was at positive 3, xf. 
Notice that I started here and I did move to the right. So I have a positive sign here, which means that I also moved to the right. So everything is reflecting what you see from the diagram. How many units to the right? One, two, three, four, five units to the right. Positive means you move to the right. Now, if I wanted to write down the distance traveled, the distance is the absolute value of the displacement. And it's trivial here because when you throw away the sign, you get the same thing back. So it's five meters. So in this case, just like the first example, the distance and the displacement were the same numeric value. But this impl implied positive here actually carries more information because it means I moved to the right. It tells me which direction I was walking. Final problem. Uh, let's go ahead and draw our number line here. Like this. Zero. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Okay. And then the very first thing I want to do is specify in the problem statement, what am I given? The initial value of x that I start at is at x is equal to 4. The final value of x is going to be x is equal to negative 5. So don't use the number line as a crutch right now. Let's find the displacement without plotting anything here and just see if the equation predicts reality. The displacement is delta x, the change in x. It's always the final value of x minus the initial value of x. But the final value of x was given in our problem statement. It's negative 5. Minus sign comes from here. The initial value of x was 4. Now, you see why we spend so much time on adding and subtracting numbers, right? Because if you have negative 5 and you go four more units to the left, however you want to think about it, all the different review that we did, this subtraction comes out to negative 9, negative 9 meters. That is the displacement, negative 9 meters. What does this mean? It means that between start and finish, I move 9 meters. But the negative sign means that wherever I started from, I moved 9 meters, but to the left. I kind of walked backwards in the negative direction. So the sign here captures that. Now the distance is just the absolute value of the displacement that we calculated, the difference there, which is 9 meters, because distance is always positive. Distance tells me how far I went. Displacement tells me how far I went and which direction. Now let's see if it makes sense. The initial value I said I started at 4. This is the initial value of x. The final value was negative 5, way over here. Let's see. Initially, I started here, and I moved to the left backwards. So the negative sign means I should have been moving backwards. That's totally right. How many units? We say nine units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units. So this is a good introduction to physics because things like this, even though I hope they're simple now for you, believe me, they trip up a lot of people. A lot of people go all the way through the first couple chapters of physics not really knowing what displacement really is and how it differs from distance. And so then whenever we calculate speed and velocity in the next section, you're going to be, con if, if you don't know that, you'd be confused because then what's displacement? How do I use that to calculate velocity? So we're going to break everything down in, this, in these classes into step-by-step -step lessons. The main takeaway here, displacement is always the final value minus the initial value. It can be negative, like this one, or it can be positive. The, the sign of that quantity tells you if you moved right or if you moved left. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but we're, we know now that displacement is a vector quantity because it tells us how much and it tells us what direction. Whereas distance is throwing away the sign information. It just tells us how far, but it doesn't tell us left or right. So there's no direction information for distance, and so distance is not a vector quantity. All right, make sure you understand this. Solve them yourself. Follow me on to the next section. We'll talk about speed and velocity and the difference between those two concepts. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.